Welcome back. Now, Beyond also has a prop library and you'll see it inside of your dashboard. What you're going to do is you're going to go to this link that says props and you'll notice here that you have props and you also have screens and frames. So what we're going to do first is we're going to click on props. There are about 3,000 of them as of the recording of this video. Now, if you decide that you want to do a whiteboard animation video, you're going to have different props, different screens and frames. If you decide to do a contemporary video, you're going to have different props and different screens and frames. We're going to choose this props area. And what you're going to see is you're going to see things that you can add to your video. Now, because you have 3000, it would not be wise to try to scroll through them all. But what you can do is you can search for them by writing in your keyword. And once you write in your keyword, you'll be able to see your props here that you can click on in order to add to your canvas. Now, if you want to see the results from the other two kinds of videos, if you just click on whiteboard animation, you're going to see that there are going to be different props there. You're also going to see them in a different way if you go to contemporary. Now, of course, there are two ways to add them. You can just click right on top of the image. Or if you want to see it up close, what you can do is you can click the preview. You're going to see it here and then you can just click the add button. That will then bring your image into the canvas. You can then move that item any place into the canvas that you want it to be. You can size it up or you can size it back down. Now, once you click on top of the image, you're going to see that there's going to be a menu here and you can see that menu up on the right hand side. One thing you can do here is when you place your cursor on top of the image, you can click the swap link and then you can determine what you want to swap it with. If you just click on an image, you'll see the swap that will happen. In the next video, we're going to take a look at the prop properties. Welcome back. Now, whenever you add a prop to your canvas, those props have properties. And you'll see those properties on the upper right hand side. Now, when we place our cursor on top of the prop, what we can do is we can determine the enter effect. And we can click this link. We can then click this arrow. We'll then be able to add in a specific effect that we want to have happen when the prop enters the screen. We're going to click slide and we're going to click slide up. What we're going to do then is we're then going to click save. What we can do then is we can then preview our slide. And you'll notice then that our prop then comes up. Once we've exited the preview mode, what we're going to do is we're going to click on top of the prop. We're then going to click on the motion path. And we're going to click add motion path. And basically what we're now going to do is we're going to determine where we want our prop to go during the course of our video. In this case, we can say that we want it to move all the way across the screen and we want it to shrink in size. Once we do that, all we'll need to do is then click save. We can then preview our prop and you'll see it doing as we set it for it. What we're now going to do is we're going to click exit the preview mode and we're going to put our cursor on top of the image and what we're then going to do is we're going to click on the exit effect. What we're now going to do is we're going to determine how we want the image to exit. Now in this case what we're going to do is we're just going to click one of the exit effects. We'll click one specifically and now what we're going to do is we're then going to click save what we're then going to do is click preview. You'll notice then that our image then disappears. Welcome back. Now there's also a chart library for you to add into your canvas. What you're going to do is go to this link and then you're going to see a number of charts available that you can open into your canvas. You're going to choose one of those charts 
and then you're going to see the information inside of your canvas. And like the other elements, you can move it any place on the page that you want. You can size it up or size it back down. What you can also do is you can also swap it out. So for example, if you want to click this swap button, all you need to do to find the chart that you want is to click inside of the one. Then you'll see the chart change. And like all of the other elements, you'll need to exit out of the swap mode and then place your cursor on top of the element in order to see the properties on the upper right hand side. Now the most important element is going to be the data, obviously. And so what you're going to do is you're going to click on chart data. And then you're going to write in the information as you want it to be seen. And you can see that here. We can use a different chart. Exit the swap mode, click on top of the element, then go back to the chart data and you'll see here that we have a different range that we can place in. We can customize the data and you'll see your content and you'll be able to change the content inside of the chart by changing the chart data. Once you've done that, you can then change the chart settings. So what you can do is you can determine whether or not you want the value and the label to be shown as well as the percentage. So you have some control over how you want the chart to appear. And what we're going to do is we're going to stop the video right here and we're going to pick it up in the chart properties explanation. You can change the text color in your chart. So for example, if we click on top of our chart and we go to this link for the text color, we can then change the text to some of the colors that we already have. So for example, we can change the text to this color, which is one of the colors in our chart or any of the other colors. Once we've done that, we'll then want to click save and then we'll want to close out our text color menu. You'll then have other properties available to you. Just as with the character library, as well as the prop library, you can also create an entry effect, as well as a motion path, as well as an exit effect. So for the motion path, we're going to click on top of the motion path link. We're then going to click on top of the entry effect. We'll then click Save, and then we'll click Preview. And you'll see our chart operating according to the entry effect. We'll then exit that entry effect. We're then going to click on top of our chart again. And this time, we're going to work with our motion path. We're going to click on Add a Motion Path. And basically, what we're now going to do is we're then going to place our chart where we want it to be. And then we're going to write the duration. So in this case, we're going to work out the duration to be four seconds. Now in this case, Vian warns us we're going to need to lengthen our scene. And what we're going to do now is we're then going to click Save. We're now going to click Preview. And you'll see that our chart does what we want it to do. We're going to exit our preview. And now what we're going to do is we're going to work on the exit effect. We're just going to click this exit effect button. We're then going to click this arrow. We're then going to determine how we want our chart to exit. We'll then choose the one we want. We'll click save. And then what we're going to do is we're then going to click our preview button. And you'll see our chart will do what we want it to do. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video.